The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with yet another homicide in Kern County. It happened last night at the Mesa Marin Sports Complex in East Bakersfield. Officers were called to the area off Highway 178 near Bedford Green Drive just before 1030 p.m. For reports of a shooting, that's where they found the victim, a man. He later died. Witnesses told officers that the man was talking to the suspect, but after a brief conversation, the suspect pulled out a gun and shot him. The gunman also shot at another person, but they weren't hit. The suspect then ran off. Police described the suspect as a Hispanic man in his late teens to early 20s with a firearm. If you know anything, you are asked to contact police at 327-7111. By our count, this is the 108th homicide this year in Kern County. Meantime, an arrest has been made in connection to a deadly shooting Wednesday morning. 20 year old Ethan Jermaine Smith was arrested for murder. Now he shot and killed the man at an apartment complex in the area of Serrano Avenue and South Real Road. According to BPD, the man died at the scene before police got there. This is an ongoing investigation. If you know anything, call Bakersfield Police. And another man is behind bars for a fatal shooting Sunday night. The Kern County Sheriff's Office say they arrested 25 year old Javel Waddell for the murder of the 22 year old Devonte Kelly. That shooting happened in the area of Cannon and Jastro Avenue. When deputies arrived, they found Kelly with major signs of trauma. He died at the scene. Now, 17's Moses Small will have a homicide wrap of where we stand so far this year as we continue to approach record breaking numbers. And now to a sad update on a deadly crash earlier this week. Rodney Mark Root, a prominent Bakersfield physician with nearly four decades of experience, has been identified as the man killed in a motorcycle crash on the West Side Parkway earlier this week. Officers say Dr. Mark Root, formerly known, formerly the chief medical officer for Dignity Health, was found dead Tuesday morning, though the CHP says the crash likely happened late Monday night. CHP says for unknown reason, Root's motorcycle left the eastbound lanes of traffic, crashing down an embankment and striking a fence. The cause of the accident is still under investigation. Now, funeral services for Dr. Mark Root are pending. Well, that's the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in Kern County. Public Health announced 406 new cases and four deaths today. Since the beginning of the pandemic, 1,544 people have died due to the virus. Now, promising news, our hospitalization rate continues to drop just two weeks after we hit our peak during the third surge. Currently, 237 people are in our local hospitals. Another 74 patients are in the ICU. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com. Well, hospitals may find themselves with another challenge this weekend. Starting Friday, healthcare workers must have at least one dose of a COVID vaccine or an authorized vaccine exemption, according to an August order by the California Department of Public Health. If they don't, they can't show up to work. Healthcare workers are required by the order to be fully vaccinated. Workers with a vaccine exemption or an incomplete vaccine dose will need at least two weekly and tests to test twice weekly and also wear a mask. Consequences are steep. If a worker is unvaccinated without an exemption, they will be placed on administrative leave until January or until they get vaccinated or secure an exemption. Well, for thousands of Californians, it's what's kept a roof over their heads as many lost their jobs due to the pandemic. But tomorrow, the state's COVID-19 Tenant Relief Act expires along with the protections that come with it. Starting tomorrow, those renting apartments and other properties must pay up or risk removal. But there are steps you can take in order to stay in your home after that deadline by applying for assistance from the state or speaking with an attorney to fight the eviction. And it may take a long time actually for a landlord to get you evicted. There's going to be a court process involved as well. But under housingiskey.com, if you get an application on file with the state, there are all sorts of resources that can actually assist you and try to prevent the eviction. California has pledged billions of dollars in federal relief money to pay up to 18 months of back rent for qualifying tenants. That also includes help for landlords 
who could get paid by the state for money they lost. Now, starting tomorrow, if a landlord seeks to remove a tenant for failure to pay, they must first apply for rental assistance before issuing an eviction. Again, that website is housingiskey.gov. Also set to expire, COVID-19 supplemental paid sick leave. The end of SB 95 will force workers to choose between going to work while sick or stay home and risk their income and job. After today, California workers will only receive the state mandated three sick days. Well, less than what is required from public health if one becomes infected with the novel virus. Now, SB 95 did not receive an extension during this year's legislative session earlier this month. Well, Kern Public Health says they are seeing a steady stream of people attending the free COVID-19 vaccination clinic at the fair. The fair is partnering with Public Health to offer the free clinic on site. No appointments are required. If you get the shot at the fair, you'll also receive a free admissions ticket. And a donation or blood of blood or platelets can also get you a free ticket to the fair. Houchin Community Blood Bank is offering a pint for a pass to help boost donations. Today and tomorrow, they'll be giving out two free adult tickets to each whole blood donor and four free adult tickets to platelet and plasma donors. Houchin says they have completely run out of fair tickets at both of their donor locations, but they still have some available at their mobile sites. To find the nearest mobile site near you, you can head to hcbb.com. As always, you can schedule an appointment there. And what would the fair be without its live shows? Coming up tonight, it's Maddie and Tay. The country duo is best known for their hits Girl in a Country song, Fly and Shut Up and Fish. They've released their last album, The Way It Feels, in 2020. They hit the stage at the fair tonight at 8 p.m. And tomorrow night's live show is Sean Kingston, the pop and reggae artist, is best known for his hits, Beautiful Girls, Fire Burning, and Eeny Meeny. Again, that show is tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And looking ahead, you can enjoy a barbecue dinner all while supporting our local first responders. The barbecue fundraiser is set for tomorrow at Compassion Corner at the corner of 21st and L Street. Proceeds from the event will help the Public Safety Professionals Retreat. PSPR is a first responders program helping those deal with the stress and trauma of their job. The barbecue runs from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. You can purchase tickets online or you can purchase them day of with cash or PayPal. A ticket will get you tri-tip and chicken, spicy green beans, rice, salad, and a dinner roll. And speaking of barbecues, the St. Vincent de Paul Homeless Center is gearing up for their annual fall barbecue. St. Vincent says the fundraiser helps feed those in need because they don't receive any federal or state funding to help with their mission. The event will be drive through only. You are encouraged to buy tickets ahead of time. Tickets are $35 per person and gets you a choice of New York steak or teriyaki chicken dinner. It's happening next Thursday, October 7th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Homeless Center on Baker Street. Well, no winning ticket was sold for last night's Powerball jackpot. The winning numbers were 2, 7, 11, 17, and 32. With the Powerball 11, the power play was three times. Now, the next drawing will be Saturday. The estimated jackpot is now $620 million. Usually, I ad lib all my weather stuff, but I had to write something in the prompter because today's a big day. Finally, here at noon, it is a sad day for all of us here at KGT as we say goodbye to our very own Nicole Gitsky. She has been my friend, my co anchor here on 17 News at noon for nearly two years. She's been such a joy to work with, always positive, smiling, and a true team player. She's even laughed at some of my not so funny jokes. They're always funny. <laughs> and has been a caring ear when I needed it. Our workplace is our second home, and it's been a true joy to spend that time with Nicole here at 17 News at noon. You're a breath of fresh air each day for me and for those who tune in here. You are a workhorse reporting stories, anchoring, a host of Pop Kern, but that's just a taste of what she's accomplished. So what are you going to be doing? Well, the good news, you guys can't get rid of no, me we'll just yet. Um, you'll be seeing me every Wednesday. I will be the communication engagement coordinator for the Animal Care Center right here in Bakersfield. So I'll be here every Wednesday for Studio 17. Um, so you guys just can't get rid of me. See all those dogs <laughs> that come in? Julie Johnson just wrangled you and took you out the door. And I, that's <laughs> something I've always been passionate about, animals. Yes. So I'm excited to get back into that. But it really is, it takes a whole community to make this whole operation work here at the news. And that's something that I couldn't do without all you. I mean, when I started here, it was the weirdest times. It was right before the pandemic. 
Then the pandemic happened. I went home and I didn't see anyone for months. And during that time, you guys all became my friends, my family, and I, I couldn't have done this without all of you. So really, it's hard leaving, but at the same time, I'm not leaving. So no. that's the good news. No one's, it's not forever. We wish you the very best, and I know we'll still see you around. Perfect, yes. All Thank right. you guys so now, much. Now we get to eat cake with Nicole. Yes. <laughs> that's my favorite part. <laughs> And thank you to everyone out there for tuning in to Noon. This show has become something special to me, and I hope you can keep tuning in. See you. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.